Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can use a variety of products to create a beautiful mixed media journal page. I'm also going to be talking a little bit about intention and words and prompts and things that I use to help me find creativity in my art journaling. So let's get started. So with this project, the first thing I want to do is start with a plain piece of art journaling paper. In my case, I am using Bristol paper and I have a Bristol paper journal. And what's nice about this journal is these pages in it can be removed and also put back in. Generally, if I'm working in a more bound book, I will just find a plain sheet and start working on it and not worry too much. But in this case, because I have the option of being able to take it out and tape it down, it's going to work a little bit better because I'm going to be adding quite a bit of water to this piece of paper. So to start with, I'm going to use some brushos. And if you saw my video a few weeks ago, I did do a video on brusho powders and how I use them in my work. And in my case, I want to stick with more some more warm tones for this project. So I'm going to add some rose red. A little bit of vermilion. Some lemon. And some cobalt blue. Touch of purple in a couple areas. And we're going to leave it at that for right now. So since my last video, I've been practicing a little bit with my brushos. And one thing I realized is I have this really small spray bottle that came with my brushos. It's probably the best one to use for this technique because it has a very fine spray. So you're going to want to spritz your brushos to get them to move. and for the colors to blend. And you can always add in a little bit of extra color if you feel like you want a little bit more color in here. I'm going to add in some yellow ochre in the corner so it's not all just lemon, but there's a little bit of variety in color. Maybe touch up ultramarine in there as well. Just going to add a little bit more water. And that's all she wrote for my little bottle. So I'm moving on to a larger mister. This is going to give a little bit more water. So I have to be a little bit careful when I'm doing this, not to have it run too, too much. And I want a few of these white edges to be a little bit more consistent. And in a couple spots here, I do have some, some areas that have quite a bit of water. So I'm going to be using a watercolor brush to just help this blend a little bit more. So the key to this right now is I have wet my watercolor brush. But I want to take my roll of paper towel and just roll it a little bit. What I want is the bristles to be wet, but I don't want it to be bringing extra water onto my surface. So there's lots of water on here. It really does not need a lot more. And you may want to leave some of these white spots. In some cases I am, and in other cases I'm going to be pulling it straight away to the edge. So again, I'm going to wipe off a little bit. Because again, this is a way you can use your watercolor brushes, because again, the watercolor brushes pick up a lot of the paint and that's not a bad thing. The problem is when it actually uh, adds too much water to your paper and you might already have pooling, 
that you may want to try to get rid of. And let's say you have too much pooling on your sheet and you want to remove a little bit of it. Like here's a really dark spot here that's going to cause a little bit of a pool. By rinsing off your brush and then just basically wiping it till it's quite dry, then when you actually look to pick it up, you'll notice that's no longer a blotch. And that's a way you can clean up these spots to end up getting a little bit more of a less bleedy less pooly look to your page. And again, it all comes down to what you want to see. But I've been working a lot with watercolors lately and I've been picking up a few tricks that I thought you might want to know. So the reason I mounted this to a small board is I wanted to be able to move it aside because at this point you want to let it completely dry before you move on to the next step. So the next thing you want to do after you've let the brushes dry is add some medium on top through a stencil. In this case I'm using a TCW stencil. I love these stencils because they have so much variety in images and shapes. I think it adds a lot to the project. I'm also going to be using this Aline's Glitter Snow. I have all sorts of mediums. I When I did the demo, when I did my original take on this one, I actually used fiber paste. In this case I'm using this Glitter Snow because it's a type of paste that also has glitter in it. So it adds another dimension to your work. And I do think this is really pretty. So by just using a pellet knife you want to gently pull it through. And this one is actually a nice super smooth medium to use. I actually really like how well it goes on to projects. In this case, you're not trying to go for a super thick layer. Actually, probably the thinner the better. Because I don't mind having a little bit of the color shine through from the brushos. And if you don't like the fact that you might have a few random lines. If you don't like that, the other option is you just add a lot more texture. I actually have some texture tools that sometimes I run through paste like this if I want even more textured look than just the stencils. But again, the, the choice is yours and it depends on what you're looking to do with your project. Yeah, and part of the reason I did do this on a board this time is this allows me to pull it to the side and let it dry. Otherwise you can sometimes end up having all your art space taken up by something that you taped down <laughs> a few hours earlier. So this way it allows me to move this to the side and then continue working on other things. It looks like the brush shows are actually picking up a bit. You might notice little tiny bits of color in there. So it might be something to think about when you're using these pastes. That the brushes underneath, because they are a water-based medium, they will sometimes pick up the color that is above them because they do tend to re-wet. So I'm going to pull that up. I think that looks really fun and I'm going to let this dry. So the next step we want to do is start stamping our images. I'm using this B Paper Company mixed media paper. This is a 93 pound paper. The reason I chose a mixed media paper for this is I'm going to be adding watercolor to my images and I want a smooth surface to stamp on but I want something that's going to color well and not warp too much. So that's why I use a mixed media paper specifically for this. So I'm also using the Tim Holtz Collection Stampers Anonymous Illustrated Garden Stamps. I particularly liked these two images that I'm going to be using on this project. So you want to be able to just stamp your images. And I'm going to be doing multiples of each just because I would like to have more images to choose between. I really like this stamp set because it really has some really beautiful images. And now move on to stamp your other image. 
to me these looks like phlox plants I do love the more flower garden look to these stamps I'm now going to move on and stamp my sediment this is, has to be one of my favorite sets of stamping letters it's a capital letters stamp set by well whisper designs and if you are interested in this particular stamp set I do have a code below that will give you a discount on your order with them so in this case I want to use the word grow so I'll be talking about today how we are going to be using prompts and words to help us come up with ideas for these art journaling pages. And so with these stamps, you want to make sure they're really even. It doesn't matter too, too much. It depends if you want to cut every letter out individually or if you plan to try to have it as one word. And just stamp them with the ink. And try not to do that. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little I'm a little butterfingery with these and uh, these stamps are good because they actually pick up a lot of ink but they sometimes like to stick a little bit to the paper. There we go. So that's better. So the next thing you want to do is to actually start coloring your images. So for these, I'm going to be using quite a bit of yellow. And the colors I'm using right now are lemon yellow and a cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow hue, actually. And the reason I'm choosing yellow is the colors that I have chosen for my brush show background have a lot of red and blue and a little bit of yellow. And I want to try to keep it a little bit on the lighter side. So I'm going to focus on the yellow side of the spectrum. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I usually, I've done this before for you guys is I'm actually going to do a wet on wet technique. I've been practicing some watercolor and taking some online courses and I've been figuring out some new things to share with you. So in this case what I'm doing is taking some clean water and I'm brushing in clean water in the area that I want to paint. Now what I want to do is actually take a little bit of green and I'm just going to touch into these wet areas and you'll see that the paint is blooming. And so by adding just touches of the watercolor along the edges it kind of fills in the color and it blooms a little bit. So drop in your color a little bit. In this case I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow as well and drop it in here as well. And what you'll notice is that they're going to start mixing. So this is a fun way of mixing colors and understanding how your colors mix together. And I went a little bit outside the lines there just because I, I had a little bit too much water close to the edges. One thing you can do to prevent that is just not being quite to the edge when you add your wet wash. And then now when you add your green, it won't go all the way out to the edges, but it's easy enough to push it out. I'm going to use a little bit of cad yellow this time. And if you think you might have a little bit too much water on your page, again, roll your brush. And now you can pull it very gently out to the edges. And if you feel like there isn't quite the intensity of color you want, just drop in a little bit more color. And with this, I should actually be looking at where the shadows are on the shaded image. 
to give me an indication of where my shadow should be. And if you're not comfortable doing a wet on wet, just stick again with your just your straight uh, dry on wet watercolor. This is a size six brush. I think I'm going to move down. This is a bit thick for some of the areas I'm trying to work in. I think I'm going to try to take a size two watercolor brush right now to get some of these, these green areas. And again, because we're going to be cutting out these images, it doesn't have to always be perfect. can have the color go a little bit past where the stem stamped lines are. I think as long as it looks fairly clean, it, it won't be too bad. And mix a tiny bit of the cad yellow with the green. And give yourself a slightly different color. Sorry, now I'm a little bit off screen with this. I have a really big watercolor palette. It makes it a little bit more challenging. And again, just adding touches in places just to add variation to your color can add a lot of interest to your piece. So now we're going to go to the the more straight yellow flowers. Again, I'm going to color in. I went back to the slightly bigger brush. Depending on how much area you're trying to cover, this is where you always want to try to go for a slightly larger brush than smaller brush where you can. It takes a little practice to work with a bigger brush, but you do move a lot faster and it usually works pretty well. So starting with the deeper cad yellow. If you hear me tapping a lot off screen, it's because I actually use I have two buckets of water off screen. I use one for cleaning my brush and the other one for dipping in to always end up with fresh, clean water.
to show you is how to paint these flock style flowers. Uh, I'm going to start with a number four paintbrush. I'm going to follow the similar technique that I did before with adding just the wet wash and then adding color back in. So I know a lot of this watercolor work can seem a little bit daunting at first. It can be hard to kind of get the wet and wet technique correct. It can take a while to figure out how your paint works. But it's also realizing a lot of it has to do with how much paint you put on the page, as well as other factors. So it's one thing to just take some time, and I, that's why I enjoy kind of coloring images, because I find it really does help with understanding how the paint flows and how it works. And you can actually have lines, so you can actually tell whether or not you're staying within your lines or being outside your lines. It's a lot. I find this almost more challenging when you're painting something from scratch than it is painting some of these images. This takes, I think, a lot more detail work, but I almost feel like you actually have a sense of where the lines are compared to everything else that you're doing. So again, it really comes down to personal preference about what you enjoy watercoloring and how you want to watercolor. But it's not a bad place to start learning. I'm going to move down to a slightly smaller brush, moving down to a size 2. I'm finding with a lot of these really small spaces in here, it is a little bit more challenging. So you always just move down to a smaller brush. Ideally, you get controlled enough that by just adding certain amounts of pressure, you don't need to worry about which size of brush you're using. But I also find that depending on the the shape of your watercolor brush, the style of your watercolor brush, especially when you're trying to control water, sometimes this is not a bad way of going about it. To the yellow flowers. So again you want to use the same technique, a little bit of the wet down and then you want to just add in your other colors as you go. Again you it has to be a little bit of a uh, it, it takes a little while to play with this to try to figure out how much water is enough water and how much is going to just cause pooling and issues. You also have to be careful not to be touching other parts of where you've put the green down because it will bleed into it. So again, just a little bit of practice will help with this. And the good thing about using the yellow is because you already have a fair amount of green down, if the yellow falls into the green, it just looks more like a lighter green. <laughs> so it's a little bit more forgiving color than, than using, let's say, pink. Because pink and green do not make a really pretty color together. <laughs> and I chose flowers for this particular layout because I was thinking about the idea of words that I want to use in 2021 to kind of encourage me to meet my goals. And I was thinking about the idea of if I could choose a couple words for this year, what would they be? And, and one of those words was grow. I have appreciated every one of you who have been following my channel. It means a lot that you subscribe and watch my videos. And I feel like that's one area where I'd really like to grow this year. I continue to, to grow how I do art, grow how I kind of interact with the people who are following this channel and just being able to just really kind of connect in a meaningful way. Also, I was thinking about the idea of growth in general. What does that mean for us? How, how do we grow? How do we live the life that we want to live? And I know with the pandemic still going on, 
they're starting to lift some of the restrictions in my area, but it still feels like it's going to be forever before life goes back to normal. And we can either feel like there's nothing we can do about it, or we can choose how we're going to use that time. And that's always a, that's a hard thing because sometimes, honestly, I don't feel very motivated to do art or do anything. And it's pushing past, trying to find ways that I can be engaged in the things that I love and the things that I enjoy and, and see what I can make of it. Because I think about the word grow, I don't, I often think about plants and because I do have a really nice garden during the summer, what I, what I've noticed is that for my plants I do well, it isn't a mistake. It isn't just something that happens. It takes a lot of deliberate planning and a lot of deliberate work on my part to make sure that I do end up with the garden that I want. In a sense, our lives could be seen kind of the same way. The idea that we need time to grow. We need time to, we need to put in the time to grow. We need to put in what is required. Like in with plants, you need to fertilize or compost and deadhead and deal with bugs that might kill the plants. You deal with a lot of different things to try to keep your plants looking really, really good. And in a sense, we need to treat ourselves at that same level of self-care where we're working on the things that bring us peace, that bring us restoration, that help us meet our goals, that help us learn new things. And that's not always the easiest thing to do because honestly, I've, I've been finding the last few months of pandemic really, really isolating. Part of it is we really couldn't have anyone in our homes for the last six weeks or so. It was really, really hard not to celebrate Christmas with family. And it was a, it was challenging. And so I feel very blessed that things are starting to get lifted a bit, that there's more opportunity. And sometimes it's hard to motivate ourselves towards those opportunities when it feels like this is going to be going on forever. I'm just going to fill in a couple spots that I missed with the green. Yeah, so I feel like this is the year of growth. This is a year where even if the pandemic is happening, I can grow emotionally, I can grow spiritually. There are many areas of my life that I can improve if I'm willing to put the time in. And considering that with the pandemic, it basically leaves me at home a lot of the time, why not choose now? So when the time comes when I can spend more time with people, I'm not wishing I could do some of the things that I'm doing now. Instead, I, I have the time to spend with others because, and I have the skill set to be able to teach new things because I've spent the time doing it. Okay, so basically those are our two types of flowers and how to color them with the yellow flowers. I'm actually going to finish coloring the rest of the images. So after I finish coloring in the rest of the images, the next thing we need to do is actually cut out these images. I'm using a brother scanning cut because I have one and that saves me a lot of time. But in this case, you can decide how many images you want to use. I'm going to generally be using three to four images for this page. But again, cut out and color as many as you feel like you would like to use for this layout. So now that the paste has dried, the next thing you want to do is actually take it off the board here. And you'll notice that anything that overlapped the masking tape will come off. Wasn't quite supposed to do that, but that's okay. I think next time we'll use washi tape might be a little gentler on my paper. Just make sure you pull down, straight down so you don't end up pulling up any of your paper. And I got a little tiny bit of bleeding under the edge. And that's okay. It depends how much you care. If you don't like the idea of it bleeding underneath the edge, then don't tape it. Just go straight all the way to the edges. But if you don't mind the look of having a clean edge and a little bit of bleeding, this is not a bad way of going about it. So yeah, the more I can kind of pull it like so, it's going to prevent the paper from ripping or pulling away in not a great way. And this board I just got from the art store. It's something I was going to do some acrylic painting on. so. I can either leave it this way and use it for these types of projects or I can eventually paint on it. So 
they're inexpensive, but they're a great way of being able to move your project so you can work on something else. You might have noticed I had a little piece of paper here. It lipped a little bit, so I'm just going to throw down a little bit of clear glue and just paste it right back down. And because this will dry clear, you won't be able to notice. So there is a solution if you end up having little errors like that. So you might have noticed with this paste that it didn't stay completely white. It picked up some of the color of the brush shows, and I actually really don't mind that. It gives it a little bit of the lighter look that I was hoping for for this piece. It gives a little bit of the sparkle and still lets some of the color come through. So I'm really happy with the result. So the next thing we're going to do is actually start adding in our flowers. So I actually used my brother's scanning cut to cut out these flowers which has been a great new tool that I've been using because I don't enjoy fussy cutting, but I love the look of the layers. So this has been the right solution for me for not being able to have the best of both worlds. So I'm going to put those two flowers down there. I think I'm going to put the little fox flowers on top. Because of the nature of these colors and the styles, I think the whole country garden thing with the style of the flowers goes together really well. And I think I'm going to let these go a little bit off the page as well. Because I don't mind the stem, but I don't, I'm not a huge fan one way or the other. So by cutting it off a little bit, I think it'll look a little bit nicer. And so I'm going to do that sort of arrangement and I'm going to adhere these down. So what do we use to actually adhere these down? I'm actually using some Zots. I find that with the paste it's a little hard using glue to get these things to stay so by using zots it helps me kind of get to where I want to be and by using large ones and small ones I can actually adhere these down to a point where I'm really happy with it the next thing I want to do is actually add my my thought and my thought was the idea of growth. And so I'm going to add grow to this journal page, but I wanted to actually make it a little bit brighter and a little bit more contrasty. So I'm gonna use these Sakura Jelly Roll Glaze pens to add some interest to these to these letters. So I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna go onto the letter and just add some glaze to make these a bit shinier and a little bit darker. And once I actually do that to the black, then I'm going to go in with this very light blue and just do this white section here because I prefer actually to have a little bit of the blue over the white. And what that allows it to do is it helps it pop against all of this extra white in there and actually ties into the background and the blues in the background a little bit better. So once you've completed coloring your letters, the next thing you want to do is add another type of sentiment or other type of quote. In my case, I have this, this Tim Holtz uh, metal quote here, encourage your hopes, not your fears. And I thought that worked really well with the idea of growth. I thought what I would do is actually to make the letters pop out a little bit more is use a little bit of golden high flow acrylic paint. You can really use any acrylic paint. I just find that the high flow falls into the, the crevices almost a little bit better. And then I just use my finger and I just let it seep into the crevices. And then using a paper towel, I remove some of the excess. In this case, because it's such a fluid paint, I would maybe have done a bit better using a less fluid paint. But I will let that dry for a couple minutes and then I will look at removing a little bit of excess paint there. And now I'm just going to remove the extra paint that has that's not in the crevices so that we can end up having the silver tag with just the paint in the crevices. And so when you're actually looking at creating a original page, I know sometimes it's hard to know where to start. And so sometimes I start with a thought or a stamp or sometimes it's whatever I'm going through that particular day. Uh, it, 
it kind of depends on on where you're at and I know there's a lot of different art journal prompts online just because sometimes we don't know where to start in this case I happened to be looking on Instagram and noticed there was an artist another artist who was talking about word her word for 2021 and I thought well that's kind of a clever idea and I started thinking about it myself and I'm like actually I have some some thoughts on that so that's what inspired this page and I love the idea of growth I think we should always be growing we should always be learning something new uh, no matter where we're at in our life and no matter our circumstances sometimes it's hard to grow because sometimes it feels like too much it can be almost overwhelming at moments but I feel like I get so much out of the experience of growing and I find it builds resiliency in my life to always be learning and always to be trying something new. And so I'm going to adhere this down. Again, I just adhered right straight over the leather letters is my plan. And then I will actually use these little brads to adhere this to the layout. And this is actually sticking up a bit, so I might add a couple more glue dots so that it lays a little bit flatter for my words. And the last thing you want to do is actually cut off these parts that are hanging out over top of your page. You don't have to. You can always let your book get kind of thick and have things hanging over. But I like a, I like its clean edge. And actually the very last thing I want to do is add a little bit of journaling. And I'm actually going to follow the circle of this flower and add my journaling in there. So there's a finished page with the journaling. I added some thoughts I had about growing and I added them within the petals here and in the center circle and along this leaf. So again, you can corp incorporate your journaling in a way where it's not the focal of it, but you can have maybe your main thought and then have your journaling elsewhere. Again, there's lots of different ways you can do art journaling and it's a lot of different ways you can express yourself, but this is one of the examples that I wanted to share with you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel, and maybe provide a comment below about what you liked about this video. As well, I have my website, hopalongstudio.com, where I have lots of other ideas on how you can start a self-care habit in your own life. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next time.